everybody. I'm here with Joe Fiducia. And behind us is the Optimus Prime Traffic Trailers. Uh, now, of course, it's not the actual truck from the movie, it's a replica. It is the world's only fan-built replica from Age of Extinction. Uh, it was built in 2016 by a lot of people, about 25 people total. Um, it was built with legal permission from Hasbro, which is really cool to say. Uh, we had built it strictly from photos and pictures that we found on the internet of the movie trucks. So we had no blueprints or specs or anything to work with. And uh, like I said, it's the only one out there in the world. There's like two others like it, which are the screen use trucks. So yeah. it's a very rare thing to be standing next to right off the bat. You know, I'm 6'5". This is like towering, towering. Um, I had met Joe, Joe the other day, and I was. It, it was funny because I had saw a video where they showed all the movie cars, and they were showing how fast they go from slowest to the fastest. And when I saw Optimus at clocked at 65, I'm like, wait a minute, he's transformed. He can you probably know. run faster than that. Yeah. But that's why he has his scout and his other teammates. They can go much faster than he can. Yeah, he, he's the one that coordinates them. That's right. He just kind of designates the commands. Yeah. So, you say you guys did this just from reference point. Yeah. We used, uh, we used pictures that we could find on Google, the internet at the time, Instagram, wherever we could find pictures of the screen used truck we just snapshotted them and tried to replicate what we saw as best as we can and then over the years that we've had this as humans evolved so does optimus right so there's a lot of things that i've done to the truck to enhance him help him evolve with time and a lot of personalizations that we've done on it that are a lot different now from the screen used truck but the base model that you see here is identical pretty much to what you would see on the you wouldn't have to know like how how long it how long it how long did it oh, I know exactly how long it took. It was um, so it was about a year from start to finish to do the the basic build to get the approval from Hasbro and all that. And then uh, it's hard to put an end date because you know after the original build was done, there's still stuff that we're doing. We're either fixing things or adding new things. Um, personalizing it, whatever it is. So there's never really truly an end date, but generally speaking, about a year to get it to the to the uh, presentable condition that we can bring it out as options. So so it could be recognized. Yes, exactly. Easily recognized. Very much. Um, uh, this is just amazing. You're in the presence of greatness, man. You're speechless yeah, almost. Pretty much because I started watching um, the Transformers from the beginning and. Uh, the animation, all forms of the animation, all the movies. Actually, I do. Yeah, the Age of Extinction was the Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I see the season tomorrow. Well, there's a lot of different movies that came out, right? There was about five movies, plus then there was the Bumblebee movie, then Rise of the Beasts. So there's a lot of different iterations of Optimus, a lot of different character evolving. And you know, there's a lot of fans out there that absolutely love this style of Optimus. A lot of fans that prefer uh, his older style or maybe the style back from the 80s when he was a cab over with the trailer, you know? Yeah. There's different iterations of Prime, but I always tell people, regardless of your personal preference, um, you can still appreciate the work that went into something like this and appreciate it for who he is, which is Optimus. He's still the same on the inside, regardless of how he looks on the outside. So, what was the inspiration? You know, like, Hey, let's build, let's build a transformer. Um, this was this was for a couple things. You know, it was kind of a pursuit of a dream, something that uh, was a bit out of left field for me, but also a way to kind of motivate my son, and inspire him to take a leap of faith in life, not be afraid to try something. Right? Um, so it was a combination of a bunch of things, and uh, I personally resonate with the character a lot. I like Optimus for his morals and his ethics and everything he represents, and I feel like I live my life in the same way he would. So. Um, I connect with the character, and that to me, I think, was one of the more important aspects as to why we chose to do this one in the first place. Yeah, other because there are notable ones like Bumblebee, Optimus, yes. Iron High. Yes. 
ratchet jazz. Yeah, funny. And, and, and you'll, you'll guys see it later, but hanging up in the back, the sword off the Yes. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. The Matrix of Leadership. You got the Matrix of Leadership there. You can't see it in the video, but you'll pan later on the on the passenger dash, right on the top there through the window, you can see the all spark, the cube from the first movie. So there's a bunch of different props I like to add, which again bring out that character, especially for the kids that come to see us. You know what I mean? So has it ever felt to start it off as a project? It's a, it was a work of art from the beginning. You know, it was um, a lot of work went into this. A lot of people were involved with it, and I'm always very appreciative to the efforts that everybody puts forth into it. Um, and it is really a rolling piece of art from day one up until now. It is it is an expression of art. Some like it, some don't. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a character that we all know and love, and that we all look up to. So it's always an honor to share it at events like this and, and private things that I do at school presentations and whatnot. Okay. Now, now, because you mentioned like there was a, a couple of notice, what was the most notice, notable moment since the role? Most notable moment since? It became public. Like for me, for us personally? Yeah. Um, We've done a lot of really good things with Optimus. I, I'd say one of the more more iconic moments is, of course, getting to meet Peter Cohen, uh, the voice of Optimus Prime. So we actually met him at a private event we were doing at NASA several years ago. He was there for the kids. We got to interact with him. He got to see Optimus, which was really cool. Um, we have met many of the different cast members over the years. I know a lot of folks who are involved with the movie and the production crew um, are aware of us. They follow us online, so they see our adventures. So that's really been cool, too. Uh, but for me personally, it's really connecting with the fans. Uh, I do a lot for kids. I do a lot for schools. I do a lot for people that could use that joy in life. So um, characters aside and meeting the celebrities aside and all that, um, I've really taken um, a lot of contentment in what we can do for the fan community, as well as inspiring my family and my son at the same time. Um, this is, this is, so I don't think y'all put it on a trailer transit. We drive it. We drive it to every destination we go to. And that's part of the fun in having it, is being able to drive it because, you know, people are just cruising down the highway, minding their own business, and then in the distance they see their favorite Transformer and they go crazy. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm not expecting to see Optimus Prime, right? So it brings a lot of joy, even on the highways when I'm not parked on the show floor, which is one of the perks you have in something like this. Because, um, and, and from now on, I'm going to pay attention because I see different videos and television shows. One where they use the uh, uh, Optimus. Wow, that's really cool. Yep, yep, I have seen that one as well. That was one of the screen use trucks that they used when they were first promoting the movie. Okay, yep. And then uh, there was another. Yes, uh, once we finished this build in 2017, we got side by side with one of the two screen use trucks down in uh, North Carolina. So that was a really cool moment. And that's the pictures that you're referring to there. That was actually the first time we had actually seen the screen use truck since the original build started. It's been a pleasure, Edward. I really appreciate the interview, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing a, a character and hero of your own. I'm, I'm just blown away. He's speechless. I'm, I'm, He's speechless. I'm just blown away. Yeah. I mean, you know, because I've seen it in the movies, uh, different videos, you know, even even um, Facebook or whatever. People, I'm, I'm pretty sure she this particular truck, like you said, they drive it and seen it on the highway. It's cool. You gotta see it anywhere we go. It's just one of those things that the, the videos and the pictures don't do it justice. You know, you have to be standing next to it to really appreciate what it represents. Yeah, and, and, and you'll get a little kick because I was actually able to catch some of the demonstrations in there. So stick the brain. Thanks again. I appreciate the interview, Andrew. Thank you very much, man. And roll out. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.